When it comes to sports development, we need to kick it off from the grassroots. And talking about grassroots sports development, this simply means school sports. This is where we discover talents who eventually make it to the elite level, which is a higher level of competitive sports that provides opportunities for gifted young persons to represent and compete for state and even the nation. Now, mass participation in sports in all schools is an essential. A small percentage of them are discovered as exceptionally gifted in particular sports. These are encouraged to take part to take up uh, competitive sports through incentives within the schools. But here in Nigeria, can we truly say that we have a good structure when we talk about uh, grassroots sports development? You know, those days um, in Lagos, um, you saw Challenge Cup, you know, mm -hmm. and um, Igbubi College, CMS Grammar School, St. Fimbers, you know, healthy rivalry amongst mm -hmm. these schools, you know. Um, it used to be a massive football competition, you know. Igbubi goes to St. Fimbers, St. Fimbers goes to CMS Grammar School, and then the students follow them there. After a point, violence began to set in, yeah. you know, but that's not to say that um, boys are not developed mm -hmm. from those um, competitions. Uh, and there were many more competitions than in football. Athletics, you know, I have friends who actually went for the Nuga Games, yeah. and some of them went, went as far as um, going to Olofi Jana was a was for the Nuga Games and all mm -hmm. that, you know. So um, yes, those were good old days, you mm -hmm. know. But our youth, we're, we're forgetting something. All of this will come back at us eventually. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, um, our youth are now involved in drugs, cultism, because um, they're actually idle. Mm. And an idle mind is, you know what it is, you know. Yeah. And and um, when they were playing football, then a guy who has played football all day, who has gone for a like the Challenge Cup those days, and he comes back home, he's too tired to get involved in cultism, he's too tired to get involved in um, um, drugs because mm. he's already too tired from playing, playing football all day. Yeah. You know. So don't, don't forget that when you get them heavily involved in sports, they actually don't have time for other vices. You know, but when you, you, you leave them idle, there are no competitions anymore, they can't play football, they can't run, no 100 meters dash anymore, no, no, inter even the entire sports is done. You know, so, 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 so it, 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 it's really annoying mm. that um, even our inter-house sports, only a few students are, are involved in inter-house sports. Um, half the students are on the fence smoking and drinking something. Only a few students are involved in inter-house sports itself. Yeah. It's all just gone. Mm. We have to look for a way to lure our students back mm -hmm. to these events. Let mm -hmm. them know how important it was those days, yeah. what it can do to them in the future, mm -hmm. and what this just do to them in the future too. You know, we have to be able to balance it. Yeah. See, show them somebody who drugs or courtesy has actually really, really destroyed his life, mm -hmm. and show them someone who was involved in these competitions and how they've become today and how rich they've become. Mm -hmm. Let them emulate people like, let them see people like Mikel Obi, yeah. and not those rappers who are going about smoking and <laughs> sagging their jeans. No, really, really, well, you know. Well, in Oshun State, a sports development program is set to be unveiled and it will be in collaboration with the private sector, which is supposed to help reposition sports in the state and positively engage her youths. The Larry Lake Sports Academy is expected to start operations in September 2021 and former Super Eagles captains Mitiu Adekwadju and Austin Okocha have applauded the government in Oshun for the intention to turn the state into the mecca of sports in Nigeria. Well, joining us this morning is a man who has given a lot to football in in the country. He is a Nigerian former professional footballer who played as a forward. He's fondly called the mathematician and big shags. We've got Shegwan Degbami, MON, on the show. Good to have you with us this morning. Yeah, thank you very, very much for having me. Yeah, you've, you've heard the conversation so far. Do you want to chip in anything before we get into grassroots sports talk? Wiley Scott has said everything. Yes, Good, morning, to... <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning. Mm. All right. Now, do you really think we have a good structure for grassroots sports development in the country? Wally has said everything. Now, why mm. do you want me to add? <laughs> of course, uh, <laughs> we need to the green jury. You are the green. We don't have the evidence is all around. Mm. The evidence is all around. Mm. We are not making any progress in all our sport, and this is principally because um, sport is not any of the priority areas of government. Mm either at federal level or at most of the state levels. Mm. You know, only one or two states are actually doing anything related to proper grassroots sports development. Mm. Otherwise, um, the whole country is infected with the virus. Very little is happening. Mm. 
True, true. Now, in Oshun State, uh, there is a reciprocatory collaboration between the state government and uh, uh, private company Peculiar Concerns on sports development and infrastructure, which is uh, geared towards uh, positively engaging and empowering the youths of the states. Now, what's your take on this? And do you believe parents have come to realize that uh, kids can mix sports and um, education? This is the first time that I would um, actually find a Nigerian, because this idea is uh, Lekon Adelike's idea. Mm. And um, although he has been involved in sports development in several parts of the country, he's constructing a sports infrastructure for states and clubs. But this is the first time he would put his own money and resources into establishing what he believes is going to be the biggest sports development mm infrastructural institution in, Niger in, in Africa, not yeah. just in Nigeria. Wow. I have seen the vision. I am consulting uh, with him on that vision. I'm using my 14 years unblemished experience mm. running a grassroots sports development project in my own academy to advance what he's doing. His own is at a higher level. And it is called the Larry Lake Sports uh, Academy. Mm. And the Osho State Government, also a state government, is completely supporting this project. It is a PPP uh, structured uh, project, and it is going to be mostly, in fact, everything will be funded by Landry Adeliki himself, mm -hmm. except that the government will provide the land, provides the road, the access to the place, provide the electricity to the place, you know, mm -hmm. just support the project so that it can take off. I think it is the most ambitious uh, sports academy project in the whole of Africa that I've seen. Okay, big mind. Okay, Big Shags, um, you are a consultant for Larry Lake Academy and mm -hmm. um, the Ocean State Government. Now, I have always felt that um, the successes of most governments abroad is that people involved in running football mm -hmm. have always been involved in football or were past footballers. Yeah. Maybe in Nigeria, it's because people who run football are politicians mm -hmm. and not former footballers or guys who have been involved in football in the past. Mm -hmm. What's the reason, sir? Why people who were involved in football or were footballers are not involved in running? our football in Nigeria, at the grassroots level and at the top level too? <laughs> well, it has been like that for ages, and all of you know it. Oh. And for some reason, those who have been running our sports generally, including football, they have seen the benefits that are there, the largesse that are there, and nobody likes to surrender power. So they see the incursion of footballers, retired footballers, into administration as something that would not pay them. And instead of working with us very closely so that we can use our knowledge and experiences oh. to complement their own savviness in administration and business, oh. they have shut us out of the equation. And that's why the whole thing is suffering. Oh. Um, I have tried my best through the years to, 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 to prove to them that as retired ex-internationals, we can be good administrators. Mm. But they don't want to hear it. And they are in government. Government is politics. We are not politicians. We are not good at politics. So <laughs> it's, it's very hard to get into that field. That's the, the major problem. So for, for as long as that's the system, politicians will continue to rule our sport. Some are trying their best. But you see, you do not buy the experiences and knowledge we have in the marketplace. Yeah. You cannot acquire them also in a classroom. Those are things that put on the field yeah. through pain and sweat and tears. Mm -hmm. And those things are the things we can transmit to other people, the younger generation and so on and so forth. I yeah. have been at this for so many years. I have been a, you know, a source of information and knowledge and research and data that could serve this country so very well. Yeah. But it is all limited to my little academy in Wasimi. <laughs> and I will continue to do what I'm doing there because <laughs> it's yielding results. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, Larry Adeleke has seen what is going on there. Yeah. And he wants to build it, make it bigger than that, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. And I'm going to give him my 100% because his mm -hmm. vision is bam. His vision is fantastic. Yeah. And you will see the revolution that will happen starting from Osho State. And my own project in Ogun State, if I get the, the, the support, such as Landry is getting in Oshun State, if I get that kind of support from the government of Ogun State, mm -hmm. it is going to be the center of sports development in Africa. Mm. And there's, there's one thing I need to add, yeah. which is scientific, which nobody has actually identified as the bane 
of our grassroots sports development, mm. the movement, the transition from primary, secondary yeah. Yeah. to a higher level of, of uh, sports development, because there's a lacuna. Mm. At secondary, after secondary school in those days, mm. okay, the my son is here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, we're talking about grassroots, and of course, he has come to show himself as well. And you know, we used to have um, <laughs> grassroots <laughs> tournaments <laughs> that actually. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, you know, we used to have um, okay, grassroots this tournaments. This is live television. This of is course. live television. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Yeah. But it's okay. I was saying, I yeah. was saying that there's this lacuna mm -hmm. which we all need to look at critically. Mm -hmm. The ages between 16 and 19 yeah. made the difference in uh, the development of our football from the past. Mm -hmm. When we were in secondary school, for example, you find that a lot of those who were playing academicals mm -hmm. in all sports were those who were in their form four or from five final year. Yeah. And those who are doing the HSC, there is no, there is no gap where you find a huge chunk of students who are not doing anything. Mm -hmm. If you left secondary school, you went to your higher school certificate class, or you are doing your GC, or you are going into technical college, yeah. you are going into another institution. But mostly those in secondary school, we are those that played academicals. Mm -hmm. Name them, Haruna Ilerika. All those guys were in higher school certificate classes. Mm. Or they are repeating their wire classes. They were not mm -hmm. idle at home. Mm. The moment that academic structure was, was stopped mm -hmm. and we had secondary school and you went straight to university or to the polytechnics, they spent the next two years looking for admission into, into the universities or mm. polytechnics, True. waiting for their jam results, doing nothing. Being idle, those mm. two years are critical. Very true. Lee Evans broke the world record, became a world class athlete at 19. Mm. Usain Bolt became the world, uh, the, the world athlete that he became at 19. Between 17 and 19 are mm. critical years. Yeah. And that's what Lan Leke Academy is going to do. When our children finish secondary school, most of them don't know where to go. And at secondary school ages, 16 mostly these days, they cannot play proper academicals. Mm. Yeah, I, have found, I have tried, even in my school, I mm. see that it is a big problem. They are not strong enough. They are not big enough. They, are not, they can't compete. Mm. But the moment they start to grow from 17 to 18, they are playing on the streets now. They are either in a higher institution. That's when their bones get stronger. That's when they get more mature and more experienced. And they can fit into that academicals space mm. that is no longer existing yeah. in our Nigerian yeah. sports. Mm. So we need to fill that gap. Lanre uh, uh, Lake Academy is going to try to fill that gap. Yeah. I, in my institution, I'm, trying to, I'm going to try to fill that gap so that they become models mm -hmm. for all other people, private, uh, private people and governments that want to develop grassroots sports. Mm. It's not in the primary schools. The primary schools, there's hardly anything. You, you, everybody just participating. You can't discover exceptional talent Very in true. any sport in primary school. In yeah. junior secondary school, they start to emerge. Yeah. When they get to 13, 14, mm. then they start to select the sport they are going to get into. To, to At 17 to 19, then they are, that's the, the, the range where they are now become very strong, they become mm -hmm. tall, they become, they, they develop in every way and they are ready to go into proper sports. We do not fill those, uh, that two year gap for them now. We yeah. allow them to just roam the street, they go into prostitution, they go into drugs, yeah. they, they just do all manner of things mm. when most of them cannot get admission into higher institutions. Mm, true. Now you know so that's a lot we have to look at very critically. Very true. We used to have grassroots tournaments that helped in unveiling these uh, talents back then. Well, uh, like you mentioned, it, it seems like even times... youth fund. See the youth yeah. fund that they are talking about. Exactly. They are not people who we are in secondary school. Most of them we are in final year secondary school or have mm. left secondary school. Yeah. So the youth fund, the youth fund project actually took care of them after they have finished secondary school. Secondary school. What do we do with these children as soon as they finish secondary school? It's mm. very, very important. Mm, very now true. they are wasting, looking for what to do, either to go to a technical college, which no longer exists, mm. or to go to a university, university, which they don't have access to, or to go to, you know, it is just so hard. Mm. There are two wasted years that we have to 
properly engage. Very true. I remember when they used to, we used to use sports to gain admissions uh, into most of these uh, tertiary institutions. But in the uh, US, it still happens. It still happens. But yeah, in Nigeria, really it looks like nah. we're, we're, we're no nah, longer nah. practicing that, nah. that, that, that field. But go ahead. But um, Big Shakes, um, as a parent, how will you ensure or assure me that if I take my child to this Lion Lake Academy, what's next for the future? Is it going to get into the car? Is there, is there a possibility? I can get into the national team or something. Are they going to have a connection with the NFF in future? So if he goes there and he plays football, what happens in the future after that for him? Mm. You see, such academies will prepare them seriously for the assignments that they want to do in the NFE or in athletics or in whatever field you want to go into. But academies are specially institutions. They're not your secondary school where you train once a week. They are schools like mine where you do three to four hours every day. Yeah. So if you are in secondary school there in the uh, Larry Lake Academy, if you are in secondary school, you are training three to four hours a day. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to from you know the final year in SS3, you are ready to go to your under 17 for the national team mm -hmm. because the training you would have received there you cannot even receive in the academies you find on the streets, mushrooming everywhere. They are specialist institutions. That's what my school is doing. We have over 55 of them now in American colleges and universities, and they are playing top-class football. One of them have, has moved to Cologne in Germany, FC Cologne, the football club. Aro Kodare is from my school. Adesioye is, is from my school. They are there because they went through the training programs oh. at secondary school level, more than we have ever done before, even during our time. Yeah. It is three to four hours every day. Oh. And that's what Larry Leke, and, and he will do more because oh. he has better facilities wow. for that. And he will take care of those two years, the two years lacuna I told oh. you about. If you finish from secondary school, no parent will be thinking what to do with their child yeah. because that place will prepare them immediately to enter university or enter a polytechnic or go abroad or go to an academy somewhere, but they would be engaged in that institution, mm. learning and doing their sports. Mm. All right, thank you very much, Big Shags. The one thank you very much, Big Shags. The mm. mathematician, of course, <laughs> and I just hope that the NFF will key into this and allow grassroots run properly the way it's supposed to run and allow these uh, young talents grow into uh, becoming elite professionals. Thank you very much, Big Shags. Mm. Thank you very much, and well done for your show. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Continue to stay safe out there.